Hi everyone, my name is Kyle, and I want to show you a geometric approach to finding Pythagorean triples. Now first of all, what is a Pythagorean triple? A Pythagorean triple is something relating to triangles, right triangles to be exact. So you can take any right triangle, and you assign these two lengths right here, we'll call these the legs, these are the side lengths that are connected to the right angle right here, we call these A and B. And we call this long one right here the hypotenuse. It's the side that's opposite of the right angle. Now, Pythagorean theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared equals c squared for all right triangles. So this is a really useful property that's used all over mathematics for countless cases. And um, I could go into the proof here, but for sake of brevity, I'm just going to just, just accept that this is actually something that applies to all right triangles. So a Pythagorean triple is values for a, b, and c such that a, b, and c are in the set of natural numbers. Now what are natural numbers? Natural numbers are counting numbers. Simply, they're just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So all we need to find is numbers such that say b equals 3, a equals 4, and c equals 5, so that 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. In this case, 9 plus 16 is 25, which is 5 squared. But since if you solve for the hypotenuse of the, of the Pythagorean theorem, you have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, c is going to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And I don't know if you've done too much with square roots before, but square roots never really give you nice outputs. It's always going to be some really long decimal or some irrational number. Like, for instance, if you have some triangle with side lengths 1 and 1, a right triangle, then this length right here, according to the Pythagorean theorem, is going to be c equals the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which equals root 2 which is actually irrational, which means you can't even express it using ratios. It's not a very clean number and definitely not a Pythagorean triple. So how do you go about finding these things? Well, the typical approach is you start with a the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you divide both sides by c squared. So you get a over c squared plus b over c squared equals 1. And since x squared plus y squared equals r squared is the equation for a circle. It's the exact same thing as this. So a is just your x, b is just your y, and if you have x squared plus y squared equals 1, then you have a circle with radius of 1. So this is just the graph of that. Assume that's our y-axis and that's our x-axis. So you say this is some x value and this is some y value. And then what you do is you find some point by drawing a line here on the out part of the outer side of the circle. And that point, since these two points are what we call rational, in other words, they can be expressed with ratios, this point will always be rational as well. And then you can introduce some new variables, m and n, and you can actually generate triples by doing this, but it soon gets really crazy and you kind of lose the visualization. So I thought of a different way of thinking about this. So you start with a square, simple enough. And the square has side length c, and has an area of c squared, simple enough. OK, let's say we add two other squares to this. So one square right here, and one square right here. Now let's call this side length right here b, and let's call this side length right here a. And of course, this is still c. Now according to the Pythagorean theorem, if these are pertaining to a right triangle, we just say a, b, and c then we know that this area, this a squared right here, in other words, this area right here, plus the square made by b, 
equals the square made by c. So all you're doing with the Pythagorean theorem is just adding up areas. So you have this b squared area plus this a squared area equals all of this c squared area. So if you have that, then why doesn't it fill it up all the way? Well, there's this little overlap right here. And this overlap is exactly the amount left over here because it has to be. Because if you cut up these two squares so that they would contiguously fit over this entire region right here, you would have nothing left over and you'd have nothing extra. So if we call this area right here D, and since this is going to be a square, we call this little side length right here, lowercase d, then this area right here is going to be d divided by 2 and d divided by 2 since you have d left over and two areas to put it into. So that means each one of these will take up half of the area. So what does this mean? This means that now we can actually generate all Pythagorean triples. How? Okay, so let's say we choose some arbitrary d. Let's say d equals 6. We make a small square with side length of 6, and the area is 36. Now that means if I'm going to try and construct a triple, there's going to be these two little side areas over here that are going to be left over from the squares that, where they don't overlap and don't actually add up in the um, entire C area. So that means half of 36 is going to be in here, and half of 36 is going to be in here. So that means the area of this has to be 18. Now what I don't know is this little length right here for this little edge. And I can just choose that to be something that divides 18 because this has to be some integer value or some natural number value. So let's just say L equals 2. Okay, well, then 18 divided by 2 is 9. So now you have 2 times 9 is this area is 18. Have the same thing over here. And now you have the makings for Pythagorean triple. You just complete the drawing of this square. And now, here is your A length, here is your B length, and here is your C length. That's all it takes. So in this case, A would be equal to 6 plus 2. So A is 8. B is going to be equal to 6 plus 9, so 15. And then C is going to be all of these added up. So 2 plus 6 plus 9. So 8 plus 9 is 17. And you can plug that in, and it will work. And this means that you can take any number, D, that's even, because you need an even times an even to get another even number here that can be divided into 2 and not have fractional results. And you can generate Pythagorean triples using it. So how do we express this in a formula? Um, you can just take this variable here, L, this variable here, D, and you can find everything you need from this. For instance, A right here is just L plus D. So A equals L plus D. And this length here, B, is just D plus this length here. Now what's this length? So what do we do to get this right here? We said first, okay, d squared is 36. That's the area here. And half of 36 needs to go here. So that's 18. So, so far we have d squared divided by 2. And then we have this L here. So we know if we want to get this length right here, we just need to divide this area by the length and we get the other length. Because this length times this length equals the area. So we get d squared divided by 2, divided by L. In other words, our side length B equals D plus D squared divided by 2L. And then for C, 
it's just all of them added up. So d plus l plus d squared divided by 2l. And graphically, it's l, there's d, and then there's the same exact length we found before, d squared divided by 2l, right there. And that gives you all of c. And now if you just pick any arbitrary number d, and then you pick a number that divides d squared divided by 2 evenly, you can generate all Pythagorean triples. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you've learned something. I certainly did when figuring this out. And uh, thanks for watching.